Hello, this is question seven from paper two from the 2020 ordinary level maths exam. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that'll bring you to all my solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it in your own time. This is the first large question in the paper and it all revolves around, well, two shapes, I guess. One storyline, we have a pole here with two cables running off it. This is, a, it's gonna be an aerial mass or, mass or something like that. And they give us some information here. They tell us this is 45, they tell us it's a right angle. Uh, I believe they tell us this is 30. And uh, then they tell us that this is equal to this, but that, that's not actually necessary because if that's 45 and that's 90, well, that's 45. And if we know they're both 45, we know they're equal. So actually that's a little redundant, that information. Okay, so part A, um, A part one, they ask us to show that this angle up here is 105. Really what they want is just to find this angle and show you're working. So I would tell them that this angle up here is equal to, I'd write it out like, um, I'd maybe name it ACD, this angle in here. ACD is equal to 60, oh, well, let me write here, 60, because 60 plus 30 plus 90 e equals 180. That tells me why that's there. And, and now I just add these together. I think it's a strange way they write this question. Uh, these two added together, 60 plus 45 equals 105. I think if you just showed the work in any way, although it's hard to show this one, it's quite an easy question. Okay, so the next part, they then tell us that the length from here to here is 100, and they want us to find, they tell us this is y, this is x, and this is h, and they want us to find what y is, the length of y here. So I don't really need all of this here, so I'll draw a new picture. I'll just draw this picture here, where I have 45, 105, and 30. There's no right angle, but there is, a, there is three things we know. There's four things, in fact. So there's plenty of information to find everything here. I'll put Y in as well. Whenever we can, uh, whenever we have a right angle, we use the, the formulas for that. But if we have no right angle, we use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Sine rule is a lot easier. We try and use that whenever I can. And the sine rule tells me that any length divided by the sine of the angle across from it, so this length and this angle, will be equal to any other length, this, there's no length here, so that's useless, this length here, any other length, divided by the angle across from it. And if I use that rule, there's only one thing I don't know here, why? So I can solve this, everything else are just numbers. So if we move this guy across, this number here, it's actually sine 30 is a half, even if we didn't know that, uh, y is just equal to 100 multiplied by whatever this number is, sine 30, divided by sine 105. And I just go ahead and put that into a calculator. I'll just check my notes. And it is 51.8. So 51.8 is the length of this. Let's put it in here on our master picture up here. All right, the next part then asks us to find the value of h and x. h is the height here and x is the length here. There's multiple ways to do this. I would now start using the right angles that are here. Uh, I would use this right angle on the side. I know lots about it. Let me draw it over here. I know that's 51.8. I know 45. I know right angle. I know 45 up here. I pretty much, that's more than enough again. That's four things, more than enough, especially to find this H here. Because I now use one of my uh, right angle triangles, sine, cosine, or tangent. So I have an angle here. I have a length across from it that I want to know, and I know the hypotenuse. So the one I would use is sine. Sine of an angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. If I rearrange this, uh, the 51.8 multiply here, we get h is equal to 
multiplied by sine 45. If I go ahead and put that into a calculator, I will get 36.6. And um, yeah, I, you know, let's squeeze the answer in here for the last one. I would use this triangle. This uh, is 36.6. This is 30. That's a right angle. And we want to know x here. I, it's Again, it's the sine rule. Sine of 30 is equal to 36.6 divided by x. If I rearrange that, we get x move over here. Sine 30 will move below there. x will equal 30, well, let me write here, 36.6 over sine uh, 30. And if we put that into a calculator, although sine 30 is a half, so it's easier to do in your head. Well, it can be done in your head. Uh, let me just, yeah, that is correct. 73.2. 73.2. And what was H again? 36.6. Okay, let me go ahead and rub most of this out and we'll do the next part. Okay, in the next part, they ask us to price all this. They ask us the price of the cable, they tell us is 25, me 25 euros for every meter. This is also another one of those cables. And the price of this pole here is 580 per meter. How much did it all cost? And we're gonna have to have VAT on it. The each um, VAT on each of them are the same, so we can just do it at the end. So let's uh, do the, the cables first. 73. 0.2 plus 51.8 however whatever that is equal to it comes out quite evenly I believe 125 but whatever that's equal to we're just going to multiply it by 25 because it's 25 euros for every one of these meters and then we're going to add on the length of the pole 36.6 and for every one of those meters we're going to multiply it by 580 Put all that into a calculator and it will give us the answer 24,353 euro. That's how much uh, this all costs before tax. To get tax, we need to get 23% of this and add it on. Or a much easier way to do it is uh, for tax, we get 24,353. Uh, uh, instead of adding on 24%, if we just multiply it by one point, 24. That, that does the adding on for us. That gets 24% uh, is point, 0 0.24 and add one onto it. We're just adding it onto the original. Uh, put all that into calculator, we get 29,954. Ah, my, uh, my writing's a bit bad here. 0.14 or 19? I'm not sure. You, you guys double check for me and let me know in the comments. Obviously, if you find any other mistakes, let me know as well. Okay, so that's the first part, A and B. The next part, they say it's, it's about the signal. So we're going to get a new shape here. So, you know, I'll rub all this out, including this, and draw a new shape up. Okay, so the question then gives us this a regular hexagon. And they tell us it's 8 by 8 by 8. And they tell us this is a regular hexagon. And it's, it's, well, basically, the question then asks us, what is the area of this shape? And it's quite easy to find the area of regular shapes. Regular meaning that all the angles are the same, all the lengths are the same. So if we turn this into multiple triangles, and this is how you could do for most shapes, turn it into triangles. All of these triangles are equal. They're all eight. They're all identical. So if we get the area of one of these triangles, we just multiply it by one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides, six triangles. So let's uh, work and get in the area of one of these triangles. There is a formula for a triangle that you have three sides. It's actually quite, there. yeah, there is a formula, but we won't even use that because there's another way I think most students would probably do it. If we forget we have this and we had this angle here, we have a formula for that. It's a half um, the length multiplied by the other length multiplied by the angle in between or sine of the angle in between. So what is this angle? It's quite easy to see when you when you think it when you when you see the answer it's like oh yeah of course it is. But a lot of times it's difficult to um, think what it is now. 
So there is 360 degrees in this circle I've just made up. And all of these angles are the same. So there's six of them. They add up to 360, so they must be each 60. That's it. So if we put this into a formula, we get the area of this triangle to be equal to uh, um, 27.71. And then if we multiply it by 6, multiply that by 6, we'll get 166.26. So that's, a, that's the answer to C part one. And C part two then draws a circle around this guy and finds the, wants us to find the area of this up here. You, there's two ways to do this. We could look at that as the area of this triangle, which we know, and the area of this segment. That's one way, but I, I don't, I'm not gonna do it that way. I think an easier way to look, think of it is, if we find the area of this circle, the big circle, take away the area of um, the hexagon, we'll be left with these little parts here. We'll be left with this little part here, and uh, this little part here, this little part. We'll be left with all these little parts. <laughs> well, I know that doesn't look quite right, but that's what we'll be left with. And we want one of them. So we'll be left with six of them, we'll just divide it by six. So it's quite easy to find the area of this. It's pi r squared, or 8 squared. The area of this is 166.26. Take, take that away, and we are left with 34.8 is the area of six of those little bits. So the area of one little bit is equal to this divided by six, which is 5.8. I think that's, uh, yes, that's all of those questions. If I've made any mistake or if there's anything you need a little clarification with or a little help with, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Until next time, have a great day.